podcast month of February, all right? And uh, this month we are talking about human relationships, and the title of uh, the series we've been going through is um, in this circle, in this circle of friends, in this circle of relationships, and circle of what you know. So everything that pertains to human beings and with the relationship, and that is what we're talking about today. And I know the sermon of today has already been preempted. So uh, today we're talking about what makes you move aside, identifying manipulation. Amen. But before we we take our seats, let's all go to the book, the the book of Matthew, chapter sixteen. Um, the Bible here is a story of Jesus Christ, um, and he's, he's, telling to, he's talking to his, his disciples, he's actually predicting the future. He's talking to his disciples, his disciples about, um, about what's going to happen to him, all right? So we join the story here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, and we're going to go all the way to 25. From that time, Jesus Christ uh, began to show his disciples uh, that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and to be killed, and to be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside, so Peter took him aside, and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. That's a very strong word, right? For you are not mindful of the things of God, but are mindful of the things of men. I pray for you that this year you be mindful of the things of God and the things of man. Amen? I want to hear you, Manzan, this morning. I'm going to give somebody a mic impromptu. Then you're going to, you're going to feel. You're going to feel the weight of the microphone in my hands. All right? Then just said to the disciples, everyone desires um, to come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And the last verse, that's the last one, right? That's the last mark. Thank you so much. God bless the reading of his word. Father, we thank you today for your word. We pray, even as we look into your word, uh, that it may give us understanding, uh, that it may be a light unto our path, that it may shine forth a bright and bright unto a perfect day. And we pray, oh God, that my time may be like the pen of a radio writer, that I may be able to, to speak in clarity and edify your people. In just name we pray, amen and amen. Before we take your seats, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, what moves you aside? I want to talk about that today. So, the, you can kind of take your seats in the house of the Lord. Um, so, the month of February, we've been talking about, in this circle, identifying manipulation. Oh, you're doing a great job, Sunday, all right? Yeah, you're <laughs> doing a great job, all right? So, this week, um, we're moving forward, uh, last week we, we, we said, what makes you move backwards? And we learned about how we're able to uh, sort out things or relate with people that move us backwards. Uh, God has placed us in relationship with other human beings. No one is born in the family of God as individuals. So maybe in your house, maybe the only child in your house, uh, maybe the only child or uh, the only boy or any girl. Right? But when you're born in the family of God, you're not born as often uh, as an orphan. God has no orphans. Amen. Neither does he have any stepchildren. And in his wisdom, he's placed us in community of people. And that community of people are different kinds of individuals, all right? As much as we vary in the way that you look on our faces, it's the same way that people vary in their temperaments and their personalities. So last week we spoke about how uh, people are able to move us forward, move us backwards, all right? And that we can't do much about Sometimes people move us backwards. There's some people who are moved us forward one day, you know? So what do we do? We just ask the Lord to stretch out his hand and heal. Stretch out his hand and, and see if he can deliver us from that particular uh, point. So today we're moving on to um, this story of Jesus Christ, all right? But what makes you move aside? There's many things that make us move aside. In fact, when you say, when you, when you say move aside, it's actually uh, maybe someone asking you to move from where you're seated. Uh, actually, maybe it can be external things that are actually that making you not to be where you are actually positioned, all right? So today, we're talking about the power of manipulation and identifying uh, manipulation. Uh, I did this deliberately because, you know, usually in the month of February, there's a high temptation to talk about love, and relationships, and what, you know. But February is just one month, right? Then there are more months coming. So what happens after February? Do you go to talk about, talk about relationships, you know? So I thought maybe talk about other issues, you know? What moves us aside and identify manipulation? And I hope that uh, no one is being manipulated concerning tomorrow in this house. <laughs> And if you're married and you're being manipulated about tomorrow, whatever is telling you not to do anything for your wife or for your spouse, 
is your spiritual wife. So please avoid and fight that. Okay. <laughs> so you have to do something. Do something, all right? Yeah, we celebrate relationships in the, in the house. We celebrate marriages also. And just to um, just add my voice to the... We actually have more, more kids in church than adults. So if the Lord is speaking to you, uh, I pray the Lord speaks to you so I can be able to see how you can manage our children's church. So our children's church is not daycare. Okay, and this house, we call it leadership development, all right? So even though they're young, or babies, we call them brother, what? Brother and sister, you know, in the faith. And we're making sure that they're they are, they are, they are, they are set on a trajectory that makes it easy for them to love God, love people, and make a difference where God has placed them. Amen? So they are continuing the power of manipulation, okay? So um, what makes us move aside, all right? So the definition of moving aside is to step or move out of the way, to give way, all right, or to allow through, to shift position. And this is what happens with manipulation. Sometimes we're actually forced to move, make way, give in, and all these things. So we want to see how we can actually overcome that so that we're not a victim of people, but um, we're a victim of God's destiny over our lives. Okay? But what does manipulate mean? Manipulate means uh, people, I think I have a slide for that, is it there? Um, uh, definition for manipulation there? So you just project it for me. Yeah, manipulation. is surrendering the control and direction of your life into the hands of another. All right? So many people are, are like are in this kind of situation now. All right? Or, or others are causing this kind of situation in the lives of other people. But we're going to see how we can sort this out so we can be able to be a blessing to others. So manipulation, simply put, all right? It is uh, surrendering your the control of your life or direction of your life into surrendering to, into the hands of another, another person. And um, um, there are so many stories in the Bible that relate to uh, the surrendering of manipulation, all right? So let me see if I can just magnify my text here. If I can be able to uh, just highlight some so we can see that actually manipulation started a long time. Before even Jesus came on the earth, you know, and um, God wants us to be free from the power of other people. Um, we are, we're not God, all right? One person should be controlled of other people is God. But whenever people t- try to bend towards manipulation, they're actually trying to be God in other people's lives, all right? So I'm going to give you a, bit, a, bit of, a, few, a few definitions, um, and then afterwards we're going to proceed so that we can um, see how... Um, how we can make most of what God is speaking to us about today, All right? So, um, so life is full of such moments that we, uh, uh, we, 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 we struggle for control, you know. It's either we're struggling for control of our lives because something else is, 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 uh, is affecting it or we're struggling to control someone else, you know. And that's why manipulation comes, comes, comes in. So it's always a power struggle for your control of your life. For some, some examples um, is Jacob and Esau. Jacob knew of the birthright and the power of the birthright. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the brother uh, was over, over, he was so hungry, a particular day he was so hungry, you know, to the point that his brother was like, ah, He's, he found his young brother was making some food. And when he came, Esau came back from the, from the field, he asked the young brother, hey, do you have some soup for me? And the young brother Jacob told him that, ah, no, if you want some of this, give me your birthright. You know, I know how it is with sibling rivalry. Maybe they thought it was a joke. <laughs> but he was dead serious. And Esau answered, what's the point of uh, birthright? I'm hungry. I'm hungry now. Am I going to eat birthright? I'm hungry now. I'm going to food now. You know, and at that particular point was a tread in birthright. And manipulation happened there through a bowl of soup. You're right, and even as we approach February, I hope destinies won't be sh- won't be uh, won't be lost through a bowl of soup. I know during my school days, people's destinies were shifted by the power of the BlackBerry iPhone, uh, 85, 20, 85, 10, right? And right now, that phone doesn't even exist anymore. So you can imagine how people are able to chip in their their destinies because of a bowl of soup, you know, uh, and other. I'm on, I think I'm going to read. I'm going to read one. I'm going to read one. 
I'm also going to, uh, yeah, going to read one, uh, another one, the Bible. And that's the story of Delilah. I think it's infamous story about Delilah and how Delilah, uh, a master seductress, was able to uh, win the heart of Samson Makawa Yamuchunsu, as we say it in Zambia, all right? Uh, so let's go to Judges chapter, um, Judges chapter 16, right? Judges chapter 16. So at this particular point, we join these guys, uh, Delilah and Samson. Um, Samson has been dribbling Delilah concerning this question, and Delilah is actually getting upset, you know. And when we read this in the New Living Translation, it says it very, put it in a very, very interesting way. It says, then, that, then Delilah pouted. At, you know, pouting when someone is like, mm, <laughs> you know. How can you tell me? How can you tell me I love you, you know, when you don't share these secrets with me? And this is where people, some people are even today, you know. You, prove it that you love me. Prove it that you love me. And I hope God's going to give you strength, even as you celebrate whatever you want to celebrate tomorrow, you know. That you don't lose your destiny here because you want to prove your love for somebody for the sake of what you hold dear to you. So don't share. Um, so I said, I love you. When you don't share your secrets with me, you've made fun of me three times. Now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. You know, so uh, uh, Samson here is in a predicament. You know, they don't know what to say. But she tormented him with a nagging day after day. And he was sick to death of it. <laughs> the power of persistence. <laughs> the power of persistence and manipulation. You know, love me if you prove it. You know, the point is she got tired. Someone got tired and he was able to take out the secret here. Another instance um, is in the book of Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 6, where Herod, it's Herod's birthday, and Herodus. Uh, daughters, dances, 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 dances. And that particular party, there were several government officials, you know, celebrating the party, and these guys were moved by that kind of dance. I don't know what kind of dance it was, whether it was it was Chimwemo uh, dance or Sheku Sheku or what kind of dance. You people are keeping quiet if you don't know all these dances. <laughs> In Cobb, there was Chimwemo dance, and uh, when they do the Kamalek like this. <laughs> And, and they, they were celebrating so much, you know, they celebrated the lady so much that the king Herod was like, ah, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever you want, 20 half of my kingdom I'll give you. This is what you've done to me. What you've done to my king today, my guest, you know. And um, the girl quickly went to her mother and asked the mother, no, my, my, you know, dad has given me a blank check. What should I ask for? You know, and the mother asked him for John the Baptist's head. And that's how the mighty prophet John the Baptist lost his life because of someone's dance. Okay? But um, this is how we see manipulation taking place. Because if, if Herod had refused, his word would have lost value. He would have been embarrassed because he had said it in boast, you know. Whatever you want, my Lord, I can give it to you. Then when he was asked this huge thing, he was moved by guilt and threatening of his position and his ego that he went ahead and killed um, John the Baptist. You can imagine what John the Baptist was feeling as he was coming, being killed. You know, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's how he lost his his life there. You know, but in this world, but 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 the word uh, uh, um, manipulation happens in three in three in three main in three main ways. All right, the first one is through flattery. The second one is through uh, threats. The third one is through uh, guilt, all right? So whoever's going to manipulate you is going to ride on these three things. Flattery is going to ride on uh, threats or is going to ride on guilt. What is flattery? Flattery is excess insincere praise, you know? I hope you don't give your bosses excess insincere. Ah, boss, thank you, boss, thank you, you know? (laughs) So you can get your way, or you can get a, a leave day, you know? Yeah, big anymore, what we say, you know? 
Oh, great presentation, you know. Manipula- flattery. Oh, you've lost so much weight. You're looking good. Flattery. But you don't say that to men. Uh, men will say, oh, you're looking buffed. Are you training? Are you, are you looking taunt? And people are like, oh, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. Oh, uh, excessive praise. And at times, they use guilt, okay? I hope you are able to take notes if you are. Guilt, you know? And it's kind of where, kind of conversation where, after all I've done for you, you know? You can't just give me this. After all, I mean to you. If I mean anything to you, you should be doing, if you, you know? So, like Delilah's story, yeah? Mm. If you love me, what can you tell me? You know? If you love me, what can you give me? You know, that's what, then they're riding on guilt. Yeah? I thought I could count on you. I'm so disappointed. Hmm? As if you're not a Christian. Manipulation. <laughs> That's what happens with manipulators. They use guilt. All right? The third one is they use threats. I'll fire you. I'm going to expose you. Yeah, and then you bend to their power. You know? Um, so, this is how we connect manipulators. You see the praises. You see the guilt stripping. They drip in your guilt and they are giving you threats. You know, it's how they control us. But how do we learn on manipulation using the story of Jesus Christ and, and, uh, and, uh, and Peter, the conversation they had? All right. We want to see uh, just a few steps on what happened in that story and see how we can glean some lessons from that. The next, um, um, please, let's go to the next one. It should be Matthew chapter 16. I want to read this scripture again. All right. Yeah, so read verse 1 and yeah, one, two, 2. From that time, Jesus began to show, them, show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. So just Christ is telling them his purpose. He's uh, explaining to them why, why he came. And what's going to happen to him, all right? Start from the elders, the chief priests, scribes, and be killed and be raised on the third day. So in verse 22... Peter then took him aside. People move you aside. All right? And you find the most the common thing with manipulators is that they're going to isolate you. Because their power lies when they're alone. Their power is diminished, diminishes when they're in a crowd. So he begins to isolate Jesus Christ and to rebuke him. Can you imagine rebuking Jesus? And saying, far be it from you. But we know Peter. Peter doesn't mean wrong. Right? Peter loves Jesus. <laughs> It was as if they didn't know why Jesus Christ came, you know. But you see, Peter rebuking, rebuking uh, uh, Jesus Christ here, saying, uh, "Fire be from you, you know, Lord. This shall never happen to you." So people who manipulate you, if you're not careful, will stand between you and your purpose, you and your destiny. So Peter was standing here between. Jesus Christ and God's will for his father. Don't want to stand in between you and God's plan for your life. But if you don't know what it is, you will trade your life for something else. Right? You trade your life for something that is cheaper. Yeah. So just in verse 22, took him aside, isolated him. All right? Fight be from you. This will never happen to you. You know? And if Jesus Christ had no spine at this particular point, they'd say, There's no dying eye. What in them? Why? <laughs> and he would have come out of, of, of God's plan and purpose for his life. And he would have been in the purpose, Peter's purpose <laughs> for his life. <laughs> Peter's purpose for his life. And I pray for you that this year you remain in God's will for your life, in God's purpose for your life. There are so many things that make us may try to, 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 to do this, stand in a way. You know, there may be needs. Pressing needs, you know. That's why even the poster showed a dangling of a, of a carrot. <laughs> Many people dangle certain things in our, in our way to make sure that we come out of the, uh, we actually move aside from our destiny. We fall another path, you know. But um, uh, uh, Peter here, did he mean wrong, you know. Did he mean wrong, but he wanted, um, he wanted Jesus Christ to leave. But that was uh, in, 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 in contrast to why Jesus Christ why Jesus Christ came. If you don't know what your calling is, you will follow anything. If you don't know what your calling is, you will follow anything. If you don't know why, 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 is, why is it that you're here, why is it you're on, is, is, you follow anything, you're going to compromise. You're going to compromise your values. 
You're going to forget why God has called you to be alive at this particular point in time. But Jesus Christ was sure of his calling. He knew he came to seek and save the lost, right? He knew why he came. He knew he came to die. And he's telling his disciples about how he's going to die. But the disciples say, no, you can't die. Lord, you can't die. You know. And the call may not be huge, all right? You might be called to your family, to love your wife. That's, 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 a, that's a huge call, to love your children, all right? Some people want to just go, go NGO, so we go save somewhere, somewhere far, you know? And other people may not be called to your work, but you may be called to, to witness Christ at your workplace, all right? So you have to know what it is, because I'll be chasing the wrong thing. You may be chasing the wrong thing, and that thing will eventually control you. That's why it's important to know what your call is, like Jesus Christ did. Knowing your calling will clarify what your plan, what God's plan for life is. You waste less time. If you know what your calling is, you're going to waste less time. You focus on what's important. And Jesus Christ is giving clarity to the disciples here. But what is common to ah, he's moving fast. <laughs> so what is common to all manipulators is one thing. Just one thing, you know. If manipulators are going to continue to exist upon the first of this earth, they need to have someone to control. Right? If there's no one to control, there's no manipulation. And you see this um, Jesus Christ's reaction in, 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 in Matthew 16, verse 23. He turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. I think Kate and Jesus is very strong. Huh? <laughs> if someone said this to somebody, you're going to receive a slap. You know, but this was Jesus Christ. And you're saying, You're an offense to me. Mm -hmm. You're not mindful of things of God. Just mindful of things of men. Just things that concern you. What you care about. You don't care about things of God. Just care about things of, of men. And just Christ was stopping the manipulation here. He was stopping the control. He was stopping the control. He control there. But what do we know about Peter at this particular point? We understand that Peter did not understand just Christ's mission for the earth at that particular point. He was not aware of it. If he, or he was, he was like, please, please, die quickly. Die today. <laughs> but he just said die today. <laughs> because he was not sure of the mission of, of Christ, you know. Uh, and I pray that God may give you clarity concerning your life. That this year, even as well in February, that God will give you clarity. That you don't waste time in this year. That God will give you clarity concerning the next big step that you need to take for your life. The Christian life is not for chancing. Yeah, it, 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 it's one which is God leads us. In fact, the power of God and his security is in his, in his leading of our lives. If you're not able to lead our lives, then there's no security. The Bible tells us that the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. The steps, not the lips, not the jumps, the steps. Yeah. That word is a lamp unto my feet. Mm -hmm. Light unto my path. Why path? Because it has a feet. That's why you're standing. That's why you're walking. There's a step. So the steps are being taken. That's what security is. So if you want to be secure, you have to make sure in Christ you are in the faith, you know, so that even when an uh, opportunity comes from manipulation, you know what you've been called to and you won't be taken away from your calling. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so if you don't know what your calling is, they're going to attempt to meet uh, the needs that God never designed you to meet. So your, your, your desire to meet that need will be mismatched with your design. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be mismatched your design. It will be so hard for you to meet that need. You'll be mismatched, you know. But your steps ordered by God to be easier because you'll be being led by God and what he has, how he has fashioned you. And next month when we begin our growth track, let me just announce this, we're going to learn how to do that. Um, to be uh, three, in three weeks, in fact, in yeah, four weeks, you've got to know what your core is, what your purpose is, and how God has designed you so that you can be able to make the right step for your life and not waste, and not waste time. Yeah, so if you, if you attempt to meet the needs we are not designed to meet, it will be very hard. Which brings me, um, something that came to mind as I was, as I was preparing. Um, we look at the story in the Bible of uh, Jesus Christ and how he healed that uh, uh, um, uh, lame man at the gate called Beautiful, right? Do I have that scripture here? Let's see. Um, should be at. Let's see if I can get that. Okay. 
Yeah, Acts chapter 3, verse 6. In Acts chapter 3, verse 6, is the story of, Jesus, of, of Peter, you know, and they see, they see the, 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 the lame man at the gate got beautiful. It was called beautiful because it was an expensive gate, obviously. So at that particular point, that guy who was standing there, who was sitting there, he knew there was a lot of traffic here, you know, and that was, that was his means of income. That's why he was able to, 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 to move, you know. But what did Peter do here? The man asked for arms, money, and Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter was able to identify what the man's greatest need was. It wasn't money. Okay. His greatest need here was restoration and not relief. All right. And we find ourselves, you know, trying to meet that people's demands and other people's needs. You, we, we, we hang between uh, relief and uh, restoration. Well, we need to we give relief, we want to restore. And for example, if this guy was given money, he would have been again the next day, he would have been in the same place. But he was given what he actually needed. All right? And this is what Jesus Christ, and this is what they had. All right? This is what they had to give. They had, they had healing to give. All right? And that's, the, and that's the healing that they gave out. All right? So even as we are looking at the needs of other people, because sometimes what may manipulate us may be other people's needs. You know, you are so moved to the point that. You want to do something, you know. But what are you going to do? Are you going to re- give relief and understand this is relief? Are you going to give restoration? So that person is is restored for good. If someone is in need of, or, or need of money, maybe they need a job, you know. If you give them money over and over again, they might be in the same state over and over again. But what if what, if what you have at a particular point is relief? It's okay to give them relief because that's what you have, all right? I don't feel bad about just giving them relief because if you had more, you'd have given more. Like these guys are able to give them more. They're able to give them healing. All right, but that's just the side. Talk about it one of these Wednesdays. Okay? So, um, if you don't know what your calling is, you fall for anything. All right? One thing that is common with all manipulators is that they want someone to control. All right? And then um, the third point is that Know when to draw healthy boundaries around you. Know when to draw healthy boundaries around you. Relationships are a product of two things, all right? The product of things that you create and the product of things that you allow, okay, or permit. Some things that you create are things that you do passively. Are things that you create, uh, create are things that you do deliberately, all right? And if you don't like what you have, you change it, right? So how do you change how do you change if it's relationship with other people who are manipulative? All right. Just Christ uh, talks to Peter in a very strong, in a very strong way. I want to see if I can give you some ways in which you can be able to uh, 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 do it, do it um, now. All right. Um, but he turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. He was drawing healthy boundaries, right? You're an offense to me and you're not mindful of the things of God. Okay. So just Christ is, uh, is, 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 is showing, a, is giving Peter a healthy boundary. And it's a, it's a function of two things. Things that you, things that you uh, create, all right, follow please, and things that you, things that, that you allow, all right? And if you don't like what you, what you have, you might better might as well change it, all right? So how do you change the, this? How do you change this? How do you create a better, a better healthy boundary? All right? Two ways. Okay? You change what you expect and also change what you expect. Right? You change what you expect and you change what to, what you're going to ex- accept. All right? So in expecting, you are, in expecting, you're refusing to receive or to accept more, less than what you expect. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're receiving, you're, you're choosing to accept more. You're, you're choosing to, 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 I'm losing my train of thought. All right. You expect more and refuse to accept anything less than what you were expecting, right? Yeah. So, drawing healthy boundaries. Um, and this is, uh, this is, this, this is, uh, this, this is uh, quite, uh, this, one, this is what happens when, when there are threats, usually. Um, maybe your boss threatening you or is going to lose your, going to lose your job. And maybe hard for you to say, boss, yeah, please. I respect you. <laughs> I really no, I expect you. I really do. Uh, but I expect, I don't, I don't expect you to say such a thing to me. You know, you're creating a healthy, 
healthy boundary, you know. And some other times may just be, do your worst, you know, <laughs> and you move on. The person will be hurt at that particular point, all right? But they'll be hurt for a moment. You're better off someone uh, is hurt for a moment than you being in a dysfunctional and healthy relationship for a long time. All right? Because that person won't do it again. We're talking about people to mani- move people mani- manipulate us. All right? And if you don't, if you don't, if you're not aware of what you, what, what you expect, people are going to give you less than what you expect and you'll be, you'll be, you'll be hurt. You'll be manipulated as well. You know? So you have to know what you expect. And please, set high bars. <laughs> set high bars. You know? Because you'll be like, ah, oh, if you need to you, you know? <laughs> my boss used to use very strong language. My, my former boss, you know, but I used to give him a look. People knew in the office, I would sit like this and I'd give him a look, you know. Then whenever everyone else is gone away, you'll be like, call me, Salah, come to the office, you know. You know, my man, I'm sorry. Don't make me touch you like that, you know. Yeah, so, so he, used to, he used to project and people were very shocked that he used to. It, you know, I never saluted him or anything, but I just have to give him a look, and he knew that so I'm not happy here. <laughs> and the beauty about that is, even after I left, he was trying to get me back. He was asking me if I ah, able to still come back. I was like, ah, no, sir. You know, we, we moved on. All right. Now what happens so much if you don't uh, accept her boundaries? Um, if you don't know what to expect, many people. I live in circles of manipulation because they don't know what to expect. We are going to continue settling for less, for, for, le- for less than you are actually, actually worth. And God wants you to be able to be, to be, to be, to be led by him, not be led by other people's emotions, led by other people's anger, you know, and if you're able to set healthy boundaries here, you'll be able to, 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 to stop that manipulation and you'll be on a trajectory of healthy relationships, even with people that hurted you uh, before. Can be in a constant in a in a in a marriage setting, you know. Your husband constantly yells, yells at you. How do you how do you sort that out? How do you stop it? <laughs> how do you stop it? You know. So no, I I love you so much, and I and I expect so much more from you than what what you give me. Please, if you're going to speak to me. Just talk to me properly, because I love you, and I know you love me. So because you love me, I want to expect more than that. Is that is that love? <laughs> What you said is that love, you know, and that is going to end. Unless he's got a problem. If he's got a problem, let him come here on Wednesday. Okay? We lay hands on him. Just to weep. Okay, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right? Yeah. So, um, Jesus Christ wants us to be able to, to know healthy boundaries and set healthy, healthy boundaries. We don't want people playing with other people's lives. But it's very easy to talk about other people, all right? What if it is you who is the manipulator? Mm. Mm. You have to say, oh, those people, those people. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you a manipulator? <laughs> and wait for an answer. <laughs> are you the manipulator? <laughs> and wait for an answer. You're lucky you've got a wall. You've got a glass there, Mr. Njungu. Otherwise, and the chair in between. We're going to wait for an answer. <laughs> You know, so Jesus Christ <laughs> wants us to, to, to also know that even as much as we may be complaining about our people who may have control over us, we might also be people that control other people. You know, and this is very hard, the hard truth. You know, so I want to pray for a bit, but before we come to a close, um, have you ever um, guilt tripped anybody? Have you ever threatened anybody to get your way? Because I don't know if that I have, all right? Maybe some of you are very testimonial saying, holy, you're right? holy than the man of God. <laughs> I know I have, you know, can't get my way. Guilt tripping, you know. Yeah, but what, 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 what is true, what is powerful, that you can never change anybody through threats. You can never change anybody through guilt tripping. You can never change anybody through flattery. Has anyone's addiction been broken through threats? No. I don't want life being changed through flattery. No. Because people are believing a lie. We're going to watch you on uh, Idol's wooden mic because you've been listening <laughs> flattery. <laughs> you've been on flattery. You've been on flattery for a long time. Your mother has lied to you. And now people are laughing at you on, on, on live, t- <laughs> live TV. You know? Yeah. But what did Jesus Christ tell the disciples afterward? 
you know, he, he speaks to, 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 to Peter strongly. Then he now speaks to all the disciples. So next verse there. Then he said to the disciples, he says, if anyone has a desire to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The person who should give control of our lives is, is Jesus Christ. Because the one who's able to change. If real life change is ever, ever going to happen in your life, you don't have to give, be in control. Just as just Christ has been in control of your life, not other people. Not the one who pays you. Not the one who says loves you. No, not the one who, 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 I'm thinking of something which is more, more church friendly. <laughs> All right, but yeah, you have to give your, 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 your control to Jesus Christ. If not, your life will be run by other people's desires, other people's minds, and other people's perception of you. And the truth is, people who, who actually act a particular way, they project who they are themselves to you. It may not even be you with a problem, but maybe those people who, who, who manipulate. Unless you're the manipulator, <laughs> then it begins, it becomes an entirely different problem. All right? So, the, 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 book, the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, uh, verse, 20, uh, verse 3 to 7. Yeah. Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. Yeah, 3 to 4. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So it's giving us a reason here. Why will someone be kept in perfect peace? All right? Because the mind is stayed on, on him, on God. So if you want peace in your life, peace in your relationship, peace in any sphere of your life, the person who needs to have control of your life is God, not people. You know, we talked, we talked, we talked, about, we talked about people who take us backwards last week, you know. No, those kind of people, you know, because if that's going to be the case, you're going to miss your destiny. Your destiny is going to be delayed. But one whose mind is focused on Christ, on God, is kept in perfect peace, right? Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. Can you have standing when I have to come to a close? Have you been blessed this morning? Yeah. I'd like us to pray. I want us to pray three things, right? Yeah, I want us to pray three things and we'll be out of, we'll be out of here. God created us to be people who have denied ourselves. If, if praying, if, um, if, 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 if worshiping God is really true, our will has to be there. Because God didn't make us as robots. We, if, if God is really God and is, if worship is really worship, then our decision to give whatever to give to God, you know, has to be a conscious one. Then it gives, it makes uh, the worship powerful. It makes the worship meaningful. Yeah. So the same with our control and uh, what we want God to 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 to, to do for us, and as we let other people, you know, if we don't have give Him control, don't have given a conscious control of what uh, uh, of what concerns us and how we let other people, you know, then then all this comes to nothing. All right. So I want us to pray. God help me to recognize when somebody is manipulating me. All right? Open up mouth and pray. God help me to recognize when somebody is manipulating me. Give me grace. I don't want to be manipulated. My, my emotions, people keep tripping me because of what they've given to me. I don't want to be indebted to anybody else but you and what you're able to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to recognize when somebody is trying to move me and someone's trying to, 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 to move me off course because of what they've given to me. Help me, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Secondly, I want us to pray. God, empower me to put healthy relationships in place. Amen? God, empower me to put healthy relationships in place. So open up mouth and pray. God, empower me. Then as we pray and God's giving you, giving, bringing things to mind, um, those, are, those are things that, that you have to deal with. And you know, if, if relationships have to end, let them end. For the sake of your destiny, for the sake of your life. For all the things that have cheapened you and your destiny. Um, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for, 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 for empowerment, oh God, for boldness. In the mighty name of Jesus, that we have healthy relationships, healthy boundaries. Oh God, free from manipulation, free from uh, the devil's influence and, 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 and human being influence. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, empower me, oh God, to put healthy relationships in place. 
in Jesus' mighty name. And the third, the last two, lastly, I want you to pray, God, help me to see my own need to control and surrender everything to you. God, help me to see my own need to control and help me to surrender everything to you. Yeah, so open up mouth and pray because sometimes when God, you may want to control even when God wants you to, to, to let go and you want who's in control. Ask the Lord to help you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help me, O oh God, to see my own need. Let me see. I also need you. <laughs> and I cannot be God. I need to, to hold on to you because when I hold on to you, I know my destiny is sure. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, shaka palada. Man telebesha. Oh God, Zebele Kataraba. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, oh God, for the freedom that comes through your word. We pray, oh God, that this word may, 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 may be rooted in us, in Jesus' mighty name. Even as we relate to the people you've brought close to us, that we won't take advantage of them, that you won't take advantage of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we'll be pillars of strength, that instead of us seeking control, that we're going to lead people to you instead in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And when things are tough and over are overwhelming, we pray, oh God, that we may be, we may be able to remember that it is you who's able to keep us in perfect peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to keep our minds focused on you in times of need, in times of trial. Help us to keep our minds on you and focus on you because regardless of what, fo- or, or, regardless of what comes to us, we know, we know that even in those things, you are there with us. So we pray, Lord, that this power of manipulation falls away from us in Jesus' mighty name, that we may be like you are, a life-giving spirit to other people, a life-giving spirit, giving hope to other people in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray, oh God, and this year, may surround us to people who are able to push us forward and give us a place in, in, in your path for our lives. People are going to help us to accelerate the destiny and your plan for our lives in Jesus' mighty name. We've been talking about control today, and if you're here and you're asking, you don't know where to start, you don't even know whether, whether you have a place in heaven. That's what it begins with. Um, your walk with God begins with your acceptance of Jesus Christ, um, and, and, and he's made it available for us. Um, we're going to be judged on why we did not receive the free gift that he gave openly to us. So if you want to start a walk with Christ, a new, a new slate this year, I want to help you. That's why we exist. So you can be able to push people towards the cross. Um, and there's room at the cross for everybody. Regardless of where you are in life and what you've done. All right. So I want to pray. Let's put together uh, the count of three. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Because I know it is you who is able to forgive my past, my present, and future sins. Take control of my life. And be the Lord over my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? Please, if church day makes sense to you, all right? Church day makes sense to you. Just keep coming back, okay? Keep coming back. It didn't make sense to me the first time. <laughs> like, what's going on? But you keep coming back, keep being found with people's like mind. Eventually, you're going to change. Okay?